everybody, and wouldn't you just be mad if somebody ever made a loose and stupid adaptation of one of your greatest works with capybaras in it, and a bad one at that? <laughs> During the 16th century, there was a guy called William Shakespeare. You know, one of the greatest play and story writers who ever lived. The guy who wrote Twelfth Night. In 1597, he would write one of the most famous and adapted stories ever conceived, Romeo and Juliet. Which, if you don't know by now, tells the story of a guy and girl who love each other just as much as their rivaling families want each other to drink snow globe water. Which then leads Juliet to fake her death with fake poison, which makes Romeo die IRL with Juliet following him. Teaching us that just because your name's in the title, it doesn't mean you're safe from the clutches of death, the end. And 409 years later, former Disney and Amblimation animator Phil Nibbling, who worked on such films as Who Framed Roger Rabbit, will put his own spin on the tale with seals in it. Because somebody already did it with Felix the Cat. Damn it! Not only did Phil direct, produce, and edit the film, as well as voice one of the characters, but he also animated the entire thing by himself, and this wasn't even the first time he did this. As someone who wrote a scope to four minute short last year, kudos to you! But was it worth it? What the hell do you think? With negative reviews and people in general not giving a rat's ass about this movie, Romeo and Juliet sealed with a kiss would sink into the most obscure depths of the ocean. And by that I mean the bargain bin of your local Asta. But recently it gained a bit of notoriety with YouTubers such as Saberspark and Schaeferl is reviewing it, and I thought I might as well throw my hat in the ring, and behold, the piss stain of my collection. Which is impressive. So today, I'm going to be subjecting myself to this horror as I send this unholy demon back to hell where it belongs, whilst also hoping that I don't throw myself into an asylum afterwards. Well, I might as well get this out of the way. You can do this, Ed. It's a dumb children's movie about seals falling in love. You've reviewed worse. May God have mercy on my soul. We start off with the backstory of the Montague and Capulet family's historic rivalry, and already the animation looks infinitely worse than the cover art. It's like comparing fast food images. Now to be fair, for a film animated by one guy, it doesn't look too horrendous, and it gets the Ed Bartold rating of good enough. We then meet two seals in the Montague family, Mercutio and Benvolio, whose voice manages to make Carl Weezer sound like Sinatra. <laughs> He's definitely not to be. What does my career come to? They cause ruckus with the Capulets, whilst we also see a sad girl named Julia to the Capulets. The elfin seal prince then shows up, warning them that they'll be sent to Shark Island if they keep up with their epic fight scene rivaling that of Lord of the Rings. Mercutio and Benvolio then find Romeo all alone on a cliff. Guess who the main protagonists are? We learn that he wants to get a girlfriend who loves him through song. Me too, kid. But boy is his song not giving the scene that much justice. Romeo doesn't really sing, the music doesn't match the situation all too greatly, the lyrics fall flat, and it's above all else pretty damn annoying. This is merely a taste of what's to come, isn't it? They then come across a Capulet party, which they disguise themselves by rolling into the sand, entering his Capulet. Mercutio tries to hook up with the chicks, Benvolio stuffs himself with all the fish he could ask for, albeit covered in sand, and Romeo coming across Juliet. We also see the prince dancing with Juliet, who's so small in comparison to him that he could eat her, and asks for her hand in marriage. Or Finn in this case. <laughs> Boy, me, it's better than every single joke in this film! As the prince asks for her father's blessing, Romeo and Juliet finally meet and dance together, whilst Mercutio's voice actor fumbles his lines. This is embarrassing. For once, I agree. This makes the prince mad, with Romeo taking on the Capulets, whilst also wooing Juliet with kisses. Romeo, you'll never have the charm of Robin Hood, just give up! 
Unfortunately, Romeo slips into the water and his true colors are shown. Literally. Leading the Montague Seals to run off. Later, we get the famous balcony scene where the two meet and confess their feelings wanting to be together, despite them being from rivaling families. We then get another musical number of Romeo and Juliet further confessing their love for each other in the stars, and what looks like a cross between the road to the Avatar state and Subspace Emissary. By the way, don't play a drinking game for every time they say that they love each other, cause you'll probably die of alcohol poisoning by the second verse. Telling me those two seals love each other? It turns out they do as Romeo proposes to Juliet with her saying yes and plan to get married the next day. But you just met. One skippable scene of Mercutio making some jokes to entertain the four year olds watching this feature later, Romeo heads to Friar Lawrence asking him to wet him and Juliet in secret, with the friar concerned about, surprise, surprise, their rivaling families. After some puppy eyes, the friar gives in hoping that this will stop the feud and the next day, Romeo and Juliet finally get married. We then see another skippable scene of Mercutio making some jokes, this time about the smelly Capulet, before taking things a tad bit too far. What do you call 500 dead Capulets at the bottom of the ocean? <laughs> no! A good start! <laughs> I'm just gonna remind you that this is a kids movie. We cut back to Romeo and Juliet, now at a sunken ship making a shoehorn Titanic reference before heading inside where we see a ballroom with numerous fish dancing. Romeo and Juliet then dance together, throwing off the fish because of their rivaling families, naturally leading them to try and kill and chase down Romeo and Juliet, but escape with a small goldfish named Kissy following them. Okay, why did the fish suddenly want to kill Romeo and Juliet for being together? Is their family's feud really that big of a deal to their mundane lives? And if it were so, it's honestly on Romeo and Juliet. Cause why did you go to a public ballroom knowing that your love is forbidden? The two then find a quiet place to be alone, right after throwing off a seagull and breaking the laws of physics. But Kissy comes back and tells them that their love is wrong. Then why did you defend their love earlier? The prince then finds out about Romeo and Juliet's secret marriage, angering him with Romeo and Juliet barely making it back home. After some more hilarious jokes from Mercutio about the prince, Romeo tells the prince the truth, who then chases and corners Jerry Seinfeld here in a cliff. Romeo comes to try and resolve things only for Mercutio to fall down from a great height, killing off the only worthwhile character in the entire film. I never said he was good. Just after the film briefly turning into Kingdom Hearts, we get some breathtaking animation that I'm convinced took 8 weeks for Phil to make as Romeo and the Prince also fall down with everyone finding out about Romeo and Juliet's forbidden love, leading the Prince to banish Romeo to Shark Island and then plan to wed Juliet tonight. Why does the rock on Shark Island look different from before? With this, we now get the villain song with the prince excited to finally wed Juliet, alongside some singing starfish backing him up. It, it's just a crappier version of Gaston. We then see Romeo alone on Shark Island, and Kissy coming in to help him cheer up by singing Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. I could appreciate that Kissy was voiced by Phil's daughter, but seriously think about this. Romeo has been banished from his own home and is about to be eaten by the singular shark at Shark Island. And you think a nursery rhyme will help cheer him up? Remember in Avengers Endgame when Tony was drifting in space with little to no resources left, on top of having the burden of witnessing half of the universe being wiped out in the last movie? You never saw Nebula sing hot cross buns to brighten the mood! Juliet then heads to Friar Lawrence to tell him about the prince marrying her instead, and we then get yet another musical number- <laughs> Stop singing! Like there were three songs within the last five minutes! It's not Hamilton, Phil! Where was I? Oh yeah, the friar sings about making an elixir for Julia to make her sleep but appear dead. She drinks it after the friar insisting multiple times, with Mercutio finding out- Excuse me, how the crap are you not dead?! I can understand that fat ass surviving, but how could you steer yourself to avoid those rocks at the bottom of that cliff? 
Does common sense logic even exist in this movie? As the wedding is set up, the friar comes in holding Juliet's carcass, disheartening her father and the Capulets, whilst the prince goes, No women, it's always something. Jeez, the love of your life is dead and that's how you respond? Benvolio the Peeping Tom finds out, who then heads to Shark Island to tell Romeo the bad news. The fire also falls in, but has shark troubles of his own. Benvolio makes it with Romeo filled with excitement, but once Benvolio spills the beans, Romeo becomes so sad that it temporarily makes the film go black and white. Eh, it happens. Romeo and Benvolio then go back to know the truth just as the fire makes it. He then makes one of the cringiest raps I've ever seen as he stalls the shark with his butt. The DK rap is Patchabell's canon compared to this. The shark chases the fire underwater, but Kissy comes in with her goldfish friends to feed the shark while making random Terminator quips. Spoiler alert, they're not funny. Romeo makes it to the altar and tries to wake up Juliet kissing her, but he also falls with the two now seemingly dead. The two families are now sad, with Romeo's father in particular feeling devastated. Romeo, my son. Your son is dead, and you sound like Robert De Niro ordering at a coffee shop. What even is this film anymore? With that, a sinister rendition of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star that wouldn't be too well to place in a horror movie trailer, then plays in the background. The fire scolds the Montagues and Capulets for their rivalry, causing the deaths of the two seals. But it's kids' movie law to finish with a happy ending so Romeo and Juliet wake up, making everyone happy and have the two families suddenly make peace with each other. The prince is mad, but Kissy finds him a girlfriend that's just as gross as him out to complete nowhere, as Romeo and Juliet now leave, living happily ever after. And as the burr pal to this turd Sunday, the credits use Comic Sans. <laughs> For never was there a story of more blow than that of Seal Juliet and her Seal Romeo. I'm just gonna cut to the chase here. This movie f***ing sucks. It's insultingly stupid. The characters either had nothing going for them or made me question life itself. The songs are pretty horrible. The one man animation from Phil, while still very respectable, can sometimes look pretty half-baked. And you'd think that from a former Disney animator, the film would have some sort of respect towards the audience. But no. It treats us like complete idiots as any low-budget animated film would. I can somewhat see the so bad it's good status some have in the film, but it doesn't carry the same ironic enjoyment value the likes of Troll 2, The Room, and Birdemic do. The film is genuinely shit. And if it's any consolation, Phil, it's still at least better than this, so take that for what you will. So unsurprisingly, the film now earns a spot in the torture room. Have you seen this film? And if you did, what you think of it? Let me know down below. And Saber Spark and Shaferless. Hate this video as a warning. Because if you ever happen to review an animated movie fully well knowing it's bad around the same time ever again, so help me, I will f*** you.